This video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, the farthest human-made object in space at 15 billion miles from Earth, has finally re-established contact with Earth after days of silence. It used a radio transmitter that hadn't been used since 1981 to contact the team on the ground. Although this connection is temporary, it allows the team to figure out what's causing the problem. Voyager 1 is currently traveling through interstellar space at 38,000 miles per hour, sending weak signals back to us. However, 2024 hasn't been an easy year for the spacecraft. It has faced several technical issues recently, with this transmitter problem being the latest. These challenges have sparked concerns about how much longer Voyager 1 will continue its mission. The transmitter problem began during a routine heating command to the spacecraft. Voyager 1 is powered by three radio isotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs. These generators use heat from the natural decay of plutonium-238 to produce electricity. This system has worked reliably for almost 50 years, but as the plutonium slowly decays, the output gets weaker. On average, the RTGs lose about 4 watts of power each year. Because of this, engineers must carefully decide how to use the remaining power. In addition, as Voyager 1 travels through interstellar space, it faces strong radiation from high-energy cosmic rays. This radiation can damage the spacecraft's electronics over time. For instance, high-energy particles can create tiny flaws in semiconductors, weaken transistors, and reduce the performance of electrical circuits. These problems build up gradually, which can cause the systems to work less efficiently or even fail completely. Because of this, managing radiation damage is especially important for keeping the spacecraft operational. To help with this, NASA engineers sometimes send commands to turn on the spacecraft's heaters. These heaters warm specific parts of Voyager 1 that have been affected by radiation. This warming helps damaged materials recover some of their functionality. For example, heating semiconductors can realign atoms that were disrupted by radiation, which fixes tiny flaws. This process, called annealing, restores some of the material's electrical properties, allowing the electronics to work more reliably. The freezing temperatures in deep space also cause problems. Extremely cold conditions increase electrical resistance in circuits, making it harder for electricity to flow. By warming these components, the heaters reduce resistance, improving the performance of the systems and preventing further stress on the spacecraft. Through this strategic use of heat, engineers can stabilize Voyager 1 and extend its mission, even after decades in the harsh environment of space. On October 16th, engineers sent a routine command to activate a heater on board, but something unexpected occurred. Now before we move ahead, I want you to imagine something. What if you could turn your ideas and creativity into videos just using a simple text prompt? without any steep learning curves or expensive production tools. This is where NVIDIA AI comes in. It's not just another video tool, it's a game changer. Want to make a video about some interesting facts about Pluto? Just focus on the vision and idea and let NVIDIA AI do the heavy lifting. Pluto is approximately 3.7 billion miles away from the Sun. I've always been fascinated by the mysteries of our solar system. With NVIDIA AI, you're the director. Need to tweak something? Use simple text commands like translate to French. Want to narrate the video in your own voice? You can even clone it for a truly personalized touch. You can try InVideo AI for free, but to unlock its generative capabilities, I recommend the generative plan at $96 a month. It includes 15 generative minutes and saves you hundreds on editing and production costs. If you're already a user, Simply add generative seconds in the add-on section. Use a link in my code in the description and transform your ideas into stunning videos. Now back to space. Commands to activate Voyager 1's heaters are sent from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California using the Deep Space Network. 
The DSN is a system of large radio antennas spread around the world that allows communication with Voyager 1, its twin Voyager 2, and other spacecraft exploring our solar system. When a command is sent to Voyager 1, it takes about 23 hours to reach the spacecraft, which is over 15 billion miles away. After receiving the command, Voyager 1 executes the instructions and sends back engineering data to confirm its status and actions. This means there's a delay of nearly two days for the engineers on Earth to send a command and get a response, making every step a slow but precise process. On October 16th, NASA engineers sent a routine command to Voyager 1 to turn on a heater. However, something unexpected happened. Even though the spacecraft had enough power to run the heater, the command triggered its fault protection system. This system is designed to save power during unexpected issues by automatically shutting down non-essential systems if they start using more power than expected. By October 18th, Mission Control noticed unusual behavior in Voyager 1 signal. It turned out that the fault protection system had altered the rate at which data was being transmitted. Then, on October 19th, communication with Voyager 1 seemed to stop completely. The team believes the fault protection system activated two more times, which led to the shutdown of the spacecraft's primary X-band transmitter. There are two main frequencies via which Voyager 1 communicates with us, the X and the S-band. Imagine them like different channels on a radio or walkie-talkie, each with its own unique purpose. The S-band frequency is a lower channel, around 2 GHz, which Voyager mainly used in the early days of its mission. It's like an old, reliable radio frequency that isn't great at carrying much information, but it does the job for basic communication. It's strong over long distances, but limits how much data it can send, like a slow internet connection. The X-band, on the other hand, is a higher frequency channel, around 8 GHz and became Voyager's primary channel as it got farther from Earth. The X-band can carry more data and send signals faster than the S-band. Think of it as an upgraded connection that lets us get cleaner and more detailed information from Voyager. It's like switching from a basic radio to a high-speed internet line for our communication with the spacecraft. This transmitter, which operates in the reliable 8 to 12 GHz range, has been used for decades to communicate with Earth. Now with the X-band transmitter offline, Voyager 1 automatically switched to its backup S-band transmitter, which transmits weaker signals and uses less power. This situation was even more challenging because the S-band transmitter hadn't been used since 1981. Even though the team was unsure if they would detect Voyager 1's faint S-band signal due to its large distance from Earth, the spacecraft surprised them once again. The Deep Space Network, with its advanced technology, successfully located and locked onto the signal, re-establishing a vital connection to the spacecraft, at least temporarily. For now, engineers are taking a cautious approach. They won't try to re-enable the X-band transmitter until they fully understand what triggered the spacecraft's fault protection system. Diagnosing the problem could take weeks because every signal sent and received takes nearly two days for a round trip due to Voyager's extreme distance. The team also needs to ensure there is no risk in turning the X-band transmitter back on. If the transmitter can be restored, it might provide important data about the malfunction, helping engineers better understand Voyager 1's current state and plan its future operations. The S-band signal is too weak to be used for long-term operations. It cannot retrieve telemetry or science data, but does allow the team to send commands and confirm that the spacecraft is still pointed at Earth. This transmitter switch is just one of many creative solutions the Voyager team has used to keep the mission going. Earlier this year, engineers reactivated thrusters that hadn't been used in decades to adjust Voyager 1's orientation and keep its antenna aimed at Earth. They also fixed a computer glitch that had disrupted science data for months. To resolve it, they cleverly divided the corrupted code into smaller sections and stored them in different parts of the spacecraft's flight data subsystem. These innovative fixes 
highlights the team's dedication to keeping this historic mission alive, even after nearly 50 years in space. The strategy of saving power by turning off instruments isn't unique to Voyager 1. It's also being used for its twin, Voyager 2, the second farthest human-made object from Earth. Recently, NASA engineers deactivated the plasma science instrument on Voyager 2 to conserve power. As the spacecraft's energy supply continues to decline, Voyager 2 launched on August 20, 1977, just two weeks before Voyager 1 was equipped with 10 scientific instruments to explore the outer planets and interstellar space. It's the only spacecraft that visited all four giant planets of the solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. However, like Voyager 1, its power source has been slowly losing power. This gradual power loss has forced engineers to make tough decisions about which instruments to keep running. Over the years, six of the ten instruments on Voyager 2 have been turned off to conserve energy. In 2024, the seventh instrument, the PLS, was added to this list. The PLS was one of the most crucial scientific instruments on board Voyager 2, designed to measure the velocity, density, and temperature of plasma. The PLS confirmed that Voyager 2 had exited the heliosphere and entered interstellar space in 2018. The heliosphere is a giant bubble created by the solar wind, a stream of charged particles flowing outward from the sun that acts as a protective shield for our solar system against cosmic radiation. Voyager 2's plasma science instrument played a crucial role in studying this solar wind. It measured its properties and pinpointed the transition where the solar wind weakens, marking the spacecraft's approach to the edge of interstellar space. This milestone was especially significant because Voyager 2 provided the first direct measurements of plasma density beyond the heliosphere. Voyager 1, which crossed into interstellar space earlier in 2012, was unable to do this because its plasma science instrument stopped working in 1980 and was permanently deactivated in 2007. Instead, Scientists had to rely on indirect data from Voyager 1's plasma wave subsystem to infer its crossing of the heliopause, the boundary where the solar wind meets the interstellar medium. The plasma science instrument on Voyager 2 was built with four sensors, or cups, each designed to measure plasma flows in different directions. Three of these cups were pointed toward the sun, where they measured the solar wind, while Voyager 2 was inside the heliosphere. The fourth cup, positioned at a right angle to the others, was intended to study plasma in a variety of environments, such as planetary magnetospheres, the edges of the heliosphere, and interstellar space. When Voyager 2 entered interstellar space in 2018, the solar wind detected by the three sun-facing cups dropped off sharply since the solar wind doesn't extend beyond the heliosphere. The disappearance of electrical current in the sunward-looking detectors indicates the spacecraft is no longer in the outward flow of solar wind plasma. Instead, it is in a new plasma environment, interstellar medium plasma. Given the limited use of the fourth cup and the spacecraft's steadily decreasing power supply, mission engineers decide to deactivate the plasma science instrument. Eventually on September 26, 2024, after decades of successful operation, a decision was taken and engineers sent the final command to deactivate the PLS instrument on board Voyager 2. This move helps conserve energy for other instruments, ensuring that Voyager 2 can continue to gather valuable scientific data from interstellar space for as long as possible. The data sent by Voyager 1 are critical because the probe is now in a part of space where the sun's influence is weak and it's telling us about things like cosmic rays and magnetic fields in a place we've never been able to study directly before. However, as Voyager 1 travels further away, staying in touch gets more challenging. Signals take longer to travel, and they're much weaker when they reach us. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are expected to continue operating and sending back data from interstellar space with at least one scientific instrument active until around 2030. 
After that, while the spacecraft will no longer be able to transmit data, they will continue their journey through interstellar space as silent messengers of humanity. Each Voyager carries a golden record, a time capsule containing sounds, images, and messages from Earth. This record was designed to share the story of humanity with any extraterrestrial life that might one day find it. Though the Voyager scientific missions will eventually come to an end, their legacy will endure. They stand as extraordinary symbols of human creativity and exploration, pushing the boundaries of our knowledge as they drift further into the vast, uncharted reaches of the cosmos. So, thanks for watching, and make sure to check out the link in the description to try InVideo AI and bring your ideas to life with just a single text prompt.